Jack wasn't going to be the president of the United States. The Kennedys were going to hold the right. office. Right, that, wow. So they There's didn't get nothing to- been said more true than that. We need to talk about the Kennedy siblings. Episode 13. Welcome to Blood and Business. I'm Bethany. And I'm Cassie. Episode 13, I brought you back. Right. And we come right back. And we come right back. And this time, we get to dive deeper into the younger Kennedy siblings, which we did the Kennedy siblings' childhood and episodes like two, two. three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two and three. Yeah. And a little bit five as well because- That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah, when they go to uh, Great Britain. Britain. Yeah. So anyways, we mostly focused on like little, little siblings- On Rosemary, Kick, Jack, and Joe Jr. Mm -hmm. I felt like I didn't really know Pat, especially Gene's personalities. Like I just knew, okay, they're younger siblings and they're a Kennedy. So I like ish know who they are, but I don't really know their personalities. Like I know Rosemary, like I know Jack and Joe Jr. And I could tell you what they're thinking. Specifically Pat, next episode we will show you who Patricia Kennedy Lawford actually is. And wow, I totally judged her and misjudged her. And like Bethany said on stories, on Instagram stories, a lot of the actions and decisions and big life choices look similar to kicks, but the person making the decisions, completely different. Completely different. Yeah, I had... I just already thought, okay, she's like a kick and yeah, so vain uh-huh. and doesn't really care just about the family. Just wants to have fun, just wants yeah. to look good, just wants to Is have it trying a- to figure out how to like manipulate life to be their best case scenario kind of a thing. Yeah, that's, I was about to say it seemed like she just wanted life to be one big party. No. No, she made, <laughs> unlike no. kick, she made sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice yeah. for- the quote unquote greater good mm-hmm. for what she felt like was right. So it is really exciting getting to like know these new characters because I wasn't going to circle back, but knowing who it is that's standing by Jack's side in this new chapter of life, this new era is like, it just enriches the story so much because. Yeah, it adds so much context. If we just focused on. Jack and who the president is and mm-hmm. was and him and Jackie and more of the glory and gore. It's different than it is when you have all of the sacrifice. It can and still be the, interesting, but it's not. Yeah, it's still fascinating, but it's, it's not, not what it actually story. was. Yeah. And actually, Bethany just watched Forrest Gump again. And in it, they have the whole funny scene where he's like, I'm, I must have drank me 13 Dr. Peppers <laughs> on account of I wasn't hungry and there was free. Uh, JFK is like, I That's, believe he just said he had to go pee. But then it cuts to the next scene. And I was talking to one of you on um, DMs about this on Instagram. And she's like, man, they really just like make it all funny. And then they really cut you with that scene afterwards where he's going pee. And he's like, and then somebody killed that nice man. And then killed his brother. It must be hard to be brothers. Right. And, the, and okay, brothers for sure, whatever. But learning who Bobby was and who Jack was, man, it must be hard to be brothers. Yeah. It is so beautiful and so unbelievable that people like that exist, that... They were that close. They were that close. and With that, so much distance and four sisters between them. Yes. I don't know. I just don't know anyone in my personal life who has a sibling relationship like that or a family dynamic like that. Like they were obviously oddballs and they were not. Yeah. And I think it the was the normal family dynamic. Largely due to Joe and Rose and the way that they just set up their family and taught them to be. And not just that, but the way that they viewed the world. The way they viewed the world, but. Their identity, like I've never thought of my last name being my identity, Mm -hmm. but their identity was Kennedy. They were Kennedys. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a question 
being close or showing up or being there or being involved or any of these things, like they weren't questions because that's who they were and that's who they always had been. So it didn't matter how much age or differing personalities or different differing interests even Uh that there were. But I do think, and I I do think, and I do think (laughs) I was thinking about it when I was watching because it's so clear in photos how big of an age difference? Oh my, there is. Gosh. Which, has has anyone watched adult? the video of episode thirteen on YouTube? If not, go re freaking listen to the episode and watch the video because the photos that Bethany put on there. Oh my gosh, it's mind blowing how much older Jack was than Bobby. Oh my, gosh. like they really did have different childhoods. He was a baby child, and Jack was like twenty. Yeah, Jack's already like sleeping around and Bobby like, is like a Bobby, baby. Bobby is like a little kid hanging on to Jack's arm and he's like holding him. I mean, the body size is like half. It's clear. It's <laughs> clear that, yeah, they are of two different generations of Kennedys. But I was thinking about this, about how the Kennedys got along, all of them. It's not like the boys and got along with the boys and the girls got along with the girls. The oldest got along with the oldest and the youngest got along with all of them. No matter who they were, it was never, it didn't even seem like it was awkward. Like I was Pat about to be say hanging out with that. Jack and it, and they're just all- Just whoever was there, they just, pl- were you plug plug in and go. Yes. Like pull pull one puzzle piece out and stick, an, stick another one in and they all fit. Yes. Because even just having us three sisters, yeah. there have been a lot of seasons in our lives where like two were really close and mm-hmm. the other one felt excluded and then we'd flip flop between- people. It's just like, it's not personal. You know, Uh when there are that many people, it becomes not personal. You're just a unit. And also their identity was such based in the name Kennedy Mm -hmm. that you weren't Eunice who likes to do this or Pat who likes to do this. You were Kennedy girls. Uh Yeah, that's so true. And how, how other people viewed them mm-hmm. is also like it added to that solidified identity of before I am Patricia, I right. am a Kennedy right. and then I'm Patricia. Exactly. But like my number one identity priority. It's like a filing is, system. Kennedy yeah. comma Patricia. <laughs> but because they loved each other and they had fu- so much fun together and they so many reveled ex- in that. Yeah. They were so proud of that mm-hmm. and l- thought that, like they were aware of how special it was. They were not. I want to stand out on my own and blah, blah, blah. Jack made jokes about it. Mm-hmm. I hope to one day stand Get on my own two feet. And then when he <laughs> is standing up as the freaking president, he's got his whole line of freaking sisters right next to him. So I was thinking about, okay, what what are the things that the Kennedys did to foster such closeness and just bond? And uh-huh. no matter what happened, no matter who died, no matter what season of life they were in, and no matter what poor decisions were made, what was that foundation? I think a lot of it in the latter years was having the common goal of the president. They were all working together towards one specific thing. They were all on the same team. They were all trying to accomplish the same thing. Jack wasn't going to be the president of the United States. The Kennedys were going to hold office. Right, that, wow. So There's nothing been said more true than that. Everyone was acknowledged. It wasn't you guys all better bow down to your brother because Mm -mm. he's going to be the ruler. They were all needed. Yeah, we, okay, you can do this, Bobby. I need you to manage this. Yeah, nobody was- Everything was important. Yeah, nobody was too young. Nobody was too dumb. Everyone Not the right gender. And that was definitely the parenting because from a young age, they all knew, okay, I have Mm -hmm. something to add, something to bring to the table. I am useful. I am needed. You know what just murders me? What? I'm just going to really bring us down right now. Oh, no. I'm just so sad that Rosemary got left behind. I know. It is so. She would have had so much fun at those tea parties. And uh, Okay. On a brighter note, to highlight that sacrifice that they all... Because it seems so fun and just... Yeah, like, of course, we we just get to go along for the ride. Um, Our brother's going to become president and we want to come along Mm -hmm. because, like, why would we not? But I think that that paints this picture that 
everyone is like graduating high school or college and then immediately going to work for their brother. And it's just the obvious choice. And like, here's a job in the family business. Right. No, 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 no. And we're going to talk about this in episode 15 with Bobby's career and what he left behind. Oh, because he loved his brother. But all of these siblings, Pat, Eunice, all these people are like in their 30s, have their own marriages, their own careers. And I think that that's another misconception is that I've talked to people about that. Oh, they had to do that. Like that was just expected of them. And it was kind of a obligation, obligation. And like you're the heir to the throne. You have you have no choice but to become the next king of right. whatever. Every single one of them had the choice mm-hmm. and made it for themselves. And which is why kick was MIA. Isn't that insane? Insane. The only person that like the a little bit. Timeline. Teddy. Yeah, he was kind of pushed into it. Yeah. He eventually rose to the occasion and accepted it as his own choice, but there at the beginning. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> he's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, but really, he was the only, like, literally everybody else made their own, fully made their own decisions. Right. But l- is the timeline between Kick and Eunice not absolutely insane that Kick I still can't wrap my cannot like the that this is one of those like weird timeline overlaps where it's like woolly mammoths were uh, on the earth when Harvard was created yeah, which is not like, true Whoa. but there are like these those weird bizarre things you're just I like I don't understand uh what did they say that is it it wasn't Plato well, who was it that, I have no freaking idea uh, I was if you're on TikTok remember. at all you know exactly what we're talking you about. know what we're talking about kick being in Europe with Peter Fitzwilliam at the same time as Eunice is in Washington, D.C. Living with Jack. What? I definitely thought Eunice <laughs> was like at boarding school. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I thought that. Like maybe in college. Like I thought that, that because I'm thinking, oh, that's kind of like around the time that Rosemary disappeared. No. No. Eunice is literally like bringing homeless children and delinquents into her home every night and then working at the nation's capital in the day and living with Jack at the same time that Kick is hanging out with Pamela Churchill and Peter Fitzwilliam. Like, what now? Mm -hmm. What? So it's a different generation, but they coincided. It's bizarre. Um, So anyways, the common goal helped them... They were side by side. They Mm -hmm. were all on an even playing field. No one was better than the other. Just because Jack was getting a spotlight does not mean, like that didn't offend the rest of them at all because they cared for Jack, knew he was going to make a difference, and knew they were making a difference. Saw their own value, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like the rest of the world thought Jack Kennedy was being president and the Kennedys knew, no, 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 no. And I'm sorry, I have to go there again. Can you imagine if Rosemary was in that room, the makeshift temporary headquarters that evening in the election, and then she stayed up all night with everyone, and then Jack won? Jack winning would have been, like, she would have been the most elated. She loved being on the winning team and being in the winning boat. Like, she would have been over the moon. That would have been the thrill of her life. It's so sad. And all of them wanted her there, too, you know? Yeah. Oh, just such a massive mistake. But then, yeah, you have to decide how to not let that take you out completely. Not just keep existing, but not let one mistake create a whole spiral of mistakes. It's just all doomed from here and I missed my opportunity. I have a huge tendency to do that. And they had to do that over and over and over again because they could have done that with Joe Jr. dying as well. Yeah. It's like you make a fool of yourself and then you never want to talk to that person again. Because then you feel like, oh, I'm a failure and mm-hmm. that was a mistake or that. And instead of learning. I'm incapable from the failure, you just bow to it. You And you, that was the Kennedy inheritance. The ability, the ability to, to not, not be got, got down. down. They just kept moving forward. And they would. They refused. They refused to lay down. I mean, even when I literally was, because I was, when I was looking at election photos, Obviously, um, Bobby's campaign was coming up as well in the future. The amount of PTSD, I just can't imagine. I am seeing these photos of Patricia next to Jack in his campaign. And then I'm seeing Patricia next to Bobby in his campaign. And I'm like, that's only a few years later. And And it's your brother. And it's literally the same campaign. And remember that 
the first Special Olympics event ever, Bobby had just died, yes, had just been killed just... a month late before, a month before or two weeks before. I don't know. It was crazy that close. summer. Yeah. That summer. And Eunice had to go on anyway. And she chose to go on anyway. And everyone would have understood if he if she didn't yes. show up. Like nobody would have been like, oh, up, first of all, it could have gone on without her. And second, that she was just like, all right, well, we did that event, but I'm done. Like, I'm just, I have the continued. second brother that it got assassinated. Like, I, I already lost Kick. I already lost Rosemary. I already lost Joe Jr. Now Jack and Bobby. I'm done. And but it would no. have been a reasonable response. And the Kennedys were anything but reasonable. <laughs> anything but reasonable. Anything but ordinary. Speaking of whenever you said the ability to not be got down, freaking Eunice. Jack wins the campaign. She goes straight to the hospital. Straight she to the hospital. And basically, Joe Sr. does too because Cassie didn't mention this, but he is about to have his freaking stroke that paralyzes him. In and the first year of Jack's presidency? Speech. Or yeah. like right after he was elected? It, I think it was like 10 months. So not even within the first year of his presidency. Right. He has his stroke. And I mean, they were not healthy people. No. They're literally, as he said last episode, they're eating freaking... Soup and barely Creamed surviving chicken, Just and yet still they think that they're capable of starting the Special Olympics and being the next president. They're the literally States. sacrificing their bodies, and you can see it in the photos. Bethany pointed out you can tell this like accelerated maturation aging, aging of Jack's face and body, and from, Eunice as well. Yeah. Oh my gosh, poor the, Eunice. I think it's her haircut, but she looks like a grandma. <laughs> she looks a little haggard. <laughs> she looks like Compared a grandma. Compared to Patricia and Jean. Oh my gosh. She, yeah, she, it's really between 1955 and 1960. By 1960, it's done. It is, they they look like different people. People, like they literally look like they aged 30 years in five. It's Wild. And that is the effect of the three-story condo in Georgetown. Like <laughs> where the rugs were freaking scooted all to the side because someone just ran through it. There was clothes hanging everywhere. There was a rotten hamburger on the mantle. Jack they and were Eunice made it out, but barely. but barely. Their bodies didn't really. What is the intro? They burned bright and then they were gone. And boy, howdy. But you know what is crazy? Eunice, the fifth of nine, and her mother only died like 15 years apart or 10 years apart or something yeah, like that. Rose Kennedy had some Holy freaking uh, contract with God. <laughs> Favor of the Lord. And I'm going to be living a long life. You hear? Joe Sr. Not so much. <laughs> he never asked for a long life. He yeah, that's asked true. For he got what he asked for. For Jack to, to live past the age of three and to be president and for his kid, uh, kids to, to change the world. To make, yeah, to create a legacy. Um, so he got that and Rose just trucked right along till she was like, what, 100? You are surviving out of sheer determination. <laughs> and the will to <laughs> put yourself in overdrive. And I mean, wasn't that the freaking truth? It's crazy because mindset is everything. Eunice. Who you think you are and what you think you're capable of is everything, period. But it's interesting because Eunice had that type of personality and so did Jack. But this, I mean, obviously Jack. Outside, sort of outside forces, forces, not sources. <laughs> but yeah, Eunice, her body just said no, and she she still lived a long life, but she was only like eighty. Rose kept going for two decades after that. She is just the most stable, sure, mm -hmm. the ability to not be got down. Like both like Joe, Joe is like just and riding Rose. this wave of like excitement and thrill, mm -hmm. and we're gonna do this in motivation. She's she is just, sure. She is. She's just so stable and sure and confident. And Joe, compared to her, is like the roller coaster of just absolute emotion. It's literally the quote that Jackie says. I don't understand how she does it, but she that. But is, also, it's like Bobby and Ethel. Ethel was the roller coaster to to just, alter boy Bobby, and I think uh, Bobby was a lot like his mom. First of all, how Catholic and religious they were, but they got along like to an, a level that most of the other kids didn't. Like they had a special relationship. Wow, Bobby are you going to talk about that? Are we going to get to hear about that or we're just going to have to take your word for it? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> you better be talking about that. In, yeah. At no, I will. Yeah, we're going to, I don't know if we want to say this, but foreshadowing. Once we lose Jack, 
Bobby obviously goes on and does more. So we're going to kind of circle back and fill in the gaps of Bobby Bobby's life, his marriage relationship, engagement, all that with Ethel. And although we did get some juicy stories of Ethel in last episode, which I loved. I was literally yeah. just smiling through that whole part. Boy, was her family wild. And that made me think. No, actually, it didn't. Cassie is the one who said. Really? See, they were risky and they didn't all die. Yeah, because all these people on TikTok are like, well, of course the Kennedys all died. Of course they had so much tragedy in their lives. They just thought they were invincible. And so they put themselves in harm's way and they were taking risks left and right. Because first of, of who all, their dad told them that they were. First of all, if that was true, every freaking teenager ever would be dead. <laughs> Second, look at Ethel's freaking siblings. Look at this Kekel family. They were risking their lives daily, daily in the in a way that the Kennedys were not, factually were not. So if they survived, only one of those siblings died really early in his 40s in a plane crash. And there were 11 Skakels. And there were nine Kennedy siblings. And, and before they were in their them, 20s, half of them were gone. So that is not, that's just not cause and effect real life odds. Those, mm-hmm. that is a Kennedy curse or a something or a spiritual battle or a something. It wasn't a curse, freaking spiritual, innately. But it might not be like a witch in her hut in the woods. Okay, Cassie's like the hexing tangled, someone. So they <laughs> can't cut her hair. She'll lose her strength. <laughs> no, no one's praying over flower over here. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. It like but a curse with a purpose, like a curse from to halt the evil. good. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, just think on these things. Think on that. Just the sheer fact that a family like the Skagels ever existed, it just feels not real to me. I just can't accept that there are 11 children to just wild in. Absolute like a race of Tarzans. Running through the streets and trying to knock and their brothers cars off for of fun. It seems like folklore. Yeah. Just to have that amount of excess is <laughs> crazy. What was wealth, if not to be flaunted? And what was money, if not to be spent? It's true. It's the Skakel way. Except for that Skakel mentality. Roller coaster of a woman named Ethel marries Bobby, who you'll, there's a quote in episode 15 that, that his best friend from um, his school days was like, what he, he had compassion. He always had that. I saw that from the time I met him in school. What he did not have was compassion for wealth that was not spent. In a wise way. In a wise way. Like, it is crazy. He reiterated, he had very, very little compassion and understanding for that. And he marries Ethel. And then Ethel gets in trouble for spinning. (laughs) Uh Oh. So, well, it was just interesting. I want to know, because it makes me think about Bobby. I'm like, hmm, was he just like really backing her up and protecting her in front of everyone? And then behind behind closed closed doors, doors, he's like, what are you doing? Like, seriously, for real though, like. But that's yet to come. I also think a huge, which we touched on this barely, we we mentioned it, but I think one of the main reasons that the Kennedys were able to just be friends with any of their siblings that ever popped in or out of the picture and Jack was so willing to let just any of them like help him. I think it was the intrinsic value that their parents taught them that they had like the whole like, we are a blessing and we have blessings to bestow. Yes. And so it's like, okay, all of us are valuable. You're valuable or I'm valuable. I'm incredibly valuable. You're incredibly valuable. So they accepted so much help from each other. And yeah. And what a gift as parents to give that to your kids that they're all on an even playing field, even that they did have favorites. Cause like Joe Jr. Joe Jr. Could have easily been seen as Joe Senior's favorite. It, I don't even know if it was an even playing field. It was just, you all have such value that it cannot be questioned. Like we are, we as a family are so, we are created by God and we are, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're like, here for a reason and we have a responsibility ones, to take care of others. And Yeah, so certain ones might get, get along with others better. Like I think Rose's favorite was Joe Jr. and Bobby and Joe Senior's, Joe favorite. Senior's favorite was definitely Kick. <laughs> yeah. Um, she was especially special. 
But that's the thing is like, she was especially special, but all of them were very special, you know? Yes, they had favorites. And that also was harmful. Like they weren't perfect in this subject because they're freaking humans. So Jack definitely got overlooked. He got neglected as far as having connections and feeling like he was valued in his parents' eyes. But also they got something right with the whole identity thing. And the more I experience life and the older I get, the more I'm like, dude, identity is massive. It is a huge deal. Knowing who you are and how you fit in like in the world. In yeah. In relationship in yeah. relation to the world. It's just everything. It does also take effort though to stand by that. And like the thing is life is just an uphill battle and you have to, you know, constantly be fighting and reinforcing and making just dis- making those choices and decisions. Jack had to choose. Who am I? Mm-hmm. Okay. I am that person. And he had, to, he had to choose that and enact it every single day. But it's like they taught them how to choose who they were. They taught them something yeah. correctly with their with identity. Agreed. I and maybe it was exactly what it was. Maybe it was that oxymoron dynamic yes. that they had that well, the they, higher plane that yes. the contradictions all made sense somehow that they only were, to the Kennedys. That they were amazing and a blessing had a responsibility to help others because of how incredible they were as individuals. Mm -hmm. Yet also they were not so important that they were some like narcissistic. That they were above playing by the rules of life and this world. Jack, if you want people to respect you, you have to go fight for your country. You might die, but that's what it takes to be, I mean... Next episode, you're going to see what happens when you don't play by life's rules and you just think that you can create your own world. Your own, your own delu- state set of, of delusion. Yeah, set of rules <laughs> that everyone will just magically play by. Because you're especially special. Because you're some God-given gift to the working world. But unfortunately, no, actually, that is very fortunate because if it were up to us to just create our own realities, wow, would we be very messed up. We already are, but the anchor of reality is a really great thing. It made me think of Pat, obviously, mm-hmm. because of the characters in her world, her world of Hollywood, and the delusion Hollywood. in Hollywood. How, okay, yes, they accepted each other for who they were and their faults. So it's like they put a lot of pressure on themselves to take responsibility and to excel and to help others and to contribute and be successful they also had a ton of grace for themselves being horrible people. Yeah. So it's like all of the complexities and it's that sphere of because we're so important yet we're not at all important. We're think, so good yet we're so evil. Yes. And I think that the the we are so important and so valuable and and so like we're good. We're okay. Like we are important. Helped them be fine with flaws. Because if your identity and ego is so fragile, then you can't make mistakes, even though you do make yeah. huge mistakes. Failure is like the end of the it. world. Right. So you then either you just, have to live in denial or have to give up. Yeah. And but so like their identity fine. and their core values were more than capable of carrying their flaws and accepting them. Yeah. Because it didn't. And that does feel like it goes all the way back to identity. Mm-hmm. It didn't destroy. It, it just their seems core. like they had such a core, such a foundation that was not shakable. AA, you have to have serenity. Mm-hmm. You have to know that there is a higher power, a higher power, and that we are not just people. And then this is it. Like there is something outside of you that has your back, mm-hmm. and that is the end all be all. On. That you are not the end all be all. Right. And the Kennedys, because they had that, they were able to, their identity was they more had solid. in such a profound, overwhelming, like they had that down. It's like we need to go to identity boot camp. Yeah, Jack was not the sick boy. Jack was JF mother freaking K. Because <laughs> he believed he could. And that's it. Probably. Also, because he, he believed he could. Oh, because he thought he could do it. Okay. You know what, Bethany always knows the scripts better than I do because (laughs) 
She edits them. Well, basically, they always still had such an identity in who they were as souls. So it really didn't matter in Mm -hmm. the flesh, like how, what what mistakes they were, because nothing could take away their true identity, which was their only identity. identity. Well, that's not really who I am. That's just my flesh. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) It's It's so much easier to like dismiss things when Uh you're like, well, it doesn't really matter. I have grace for myself. But then you extend that grace to other people, aka your siblings, and you're able to withstand a lot withstand a freaking lot because you're looking at the other person like that is my soulmate we're on a mission together to change the world Mm -hmm. it's not the you did something and that's who you are and how could you do that to me your character Mm -hmm. is so trash it's like well your soul isn't trash there's also a revelation in that that if you think that way then this life becomes a lot less meaningful and like it because it's not everything. And in fact, it is a blip on the millennium, whatever, however long you've got that is eternity. <laughs> you Which know is I mean? so encouraging like, too, because when you're having really, really bad days, you're dealing with depression, uh-huh. anxiety, crippling things. Or when someone does something to you or makes a mistake or causes you pain, uh-huh. it puts it into perspective of like, this isn't all that there is. Yeah, this so, is just an experience. Like this is my experience as a human being. And it's not like I have to make it and I'm not living something. Like I don't need it to have a purpose because I have a purpose that is greater and outside of the realm of the hurt and the pain. Yeah, I am more than my story. I am more than what people have done to me. I am more than my feelings and my emotions. I'm more than the 80 years that I'm going to be on this planet. Yeah, it just really does put everything into perspective. They all bought in hard on that. Nobody was like, well, I don't really. Be-. And and they were all playing in the same game. Uh, I too. hate I hate ragging on cake, but she's the one that kind of rejected. And, and I don't know. That she I don't even rejected. think that she rejected it. I just think that she. A little bit like Jack had decided I'm going to allow myself this. I think that I she think thought you're right. She was, in her she was 20s. having fun. She was allowed a to be. A person and, then and she figure would, it out and not have FOMO and just ride the roller coasters of life because she was going to, her last stop would be I'm obviously a Catholic. Like, I think that she I really, am obviously a child of God. To heck with the rest of it. It's just And choices. I'll get there eventually. Yeah, like Jack with all his affairs. and his, I'm just wasting oh. a little bit of time. It's like in Jackie's episode. I think it was in Jackie's episode. Maybe it was the one that, the episode after that. But you say Jack took for granted the grace mm-hmm. that Jackie had he thought that because that was a physical betrayal. Yeah, he thought that the same grace would extend and forgiveness and like ignore basically ignoring the that same grace would extend to the negligence or the the emotional betrayal and abandoning her emotionally. Mm-hmm. I think that Kick basically did the same thing with yeah, her so life. It's, like it's she kind just of you thought, can you can take this thought that is really really great and and go too far with it. Like Kick did well, nothing really matters. I can do what I want and take my time because my identity and my value is unshakable. So I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And I I don't think anyone thinks that they're going to freaking live a short life except for freaking Jack Kennedy. Oh, have fun in your 20s. Yeah, your 20s are for figuring yourself out and exploring. It's for making mistakes. And And it is for making mistakes in the direction that you actually want to be going and becoming the person that you actually want to be. Not for... Going in the opposite direction so that you have to freaking yeah. loop back around and un- dig yourself out of the trenches. Mm-hmm. Why would you do that? Because you're more valuable than, or you're you're too valuable for that. Yeah. Because that does have an effect on your identity, your core. And I do think that that kick, her view differed from Jack's mm-hmm. and from the rest of the Kennedys in that she was more focused on herself and we yeah. talked about that, that that she was her number one priority right. and her responsibility was a side. Mm-hmm. For Jack and the rest of them, it was the their responsibility was their main thing and their mistresses were their side thing. Yeah. Like they- It's true. They let their risky behavior, their bad behavior, in their eyes, sinful behavior- come into their life a little bit. They gave them, they gave that a little bit of room, their flesh and their humanity. But they and held having it fun. with loose hands. Yes. Loose and they grip. had a line. I'm not spending my freaking money on my mistresses. I'm not spending my 
emotional energy on my mistresses. Yeah. He had a clear line of who was family and who wasn't. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah. And, and which is why it never destroyed them. And their purpose. And their, they never lost their relationships. Sight. Yeah. Jack was never going to lose sight of what he was going to become because of yeah. some girl. So I think with Kick, because she had, it's like you have to be so, so careful about like you're, somebody said, I can't, I don't know who it was, some freaking philosopher or therapist. Some or smart person sometimes. Some psychologist said, your most important promises are the promises that you make to yourself because the, it goes back to the whole identity thing. If your identity is what you're going to base your decisions on, your decisions are your life. Mm-hmm. So your identity is your life. That is life or death. And Kick, I think, betrayed herself and her core values, what she actually thought. She was setting those to the side for a moment to have fun, like you're saying. She was like, well, I'll pick those back. Those are my real, that's real kick, but I'll pick those back up when I feel like it after I have fun and I'll allow myself to do that. But once she did that with Billy and kind of crossed that, crossed the Rubicon, Mm -hmm. crossed that barrier, she damaged her own view of herself. She had already- Side of who she was. So she broke that and then she like really lost- Like once you. Yeah, she like turned out the lights and then couldn't find her way back. She walked too far away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to still be tethered to what actually matters to you. Mm -hmm. So let yourself make make mistakes, but never, never cut the rope. And I am never ending consistently, never ceasing to rag on kick. Oh, but. (laughs) I think that the reason why is because if another person would have done exactly the same thing that she did, if if Pamela Churchill would have died how Kick died, fine, so be it. That is who she was. That's Pamela Churchill. And she was true to herself. That wasn't the real Kick. That wasn't who she was. And that's what makes it so freaking tragic and sad because she was on a freaking weekend having fun gallivanting for a moment, but that wasn't her true self. And she died living as someone that she wasn't. You are, she was a Kennedy. Yeah, she abandoned She was herself. a Kennedy. She had freaking abandoned herself and she was going to come back and get it later. And she freaking got cut off. Mm-hmm. That's the shock. Yep. It, it's only sad because it wasn't right. Yeah. You're right. I haven't thought about that. That the tragedy is that she abandoned herself, abandoned herself, and through that, lost everything. It's not, not the same sadness that I have for Joe Jr. Because, yeah, exactly, exactly. Because like he died she, being so true to himself. Yes. Literally, I mean, I couldn't picture a better ending Walking for him. Walking in, eyes wide, freaking open, and yeah. being prepared fully for that. Mm-hmm. And he went being to like heaven this, being like, I'm I dying for. Yeah. lived my life. I lived Joe Jr., I live Joe Jr. Kennedy. If Kick would have died in the exact same way next to Eunice and Jack, still sad, still tragic, but not as haunting and heartbreaking because she wasn't home. She wasn't home in her within herself. Mm-hmm. She was lost. She was the lost girl and she'll forever be lost now. Oh, it gives me chills. She's- she that will is forever so be lost. Sad. That's what it is. If if that would have been just a weekend, okay, whatever. It's like that she was living her entire life there. Uh-huh. She had fully given herself over. Like yeah. her whole entire identity core self, she had abandoned. You know? Uh-huh. It's almost like the feeling when something happens to someone and they weren't supposed to be there. Yes, exactly. Like That's something. Weird. It's just not right. Yeah. Something like is with not the timeline or like with destiny. Like yes. you weren't supposed to be there. That wasn't supposed to happen to you. Yes. Or that's it's not, just not right. It doesn't line up. Yeah. There's something so unsettling about it. Yeah. That's the shock. But I think that that's interesting too to think about, which why are we back to comparing Kick and Jack? But you saying, okay, if she was just going off on a weekend and yeah, coming like back. She was like just, Jack did that all the time. He would like separate. Yes. But he just didn't go so far as to make that 
who he was. He wasn't committed to it, that. It was like Kick was trying on a costume. You know how people make that analogy yeah. where you're like, it's Halloween all the time because I just live my life in a costume, but that's, this is not who I really am. That's so that's, creepy. That's what Kick was doing. Jack never did that. She was living someone else's life. That's the thing. She was living somebody else's life. It wasn't Kick Kennedy. She was trying to be some British rich girl, some British socialite, and she was an American heiress with an heir to the freaking Kennedy identity, a people who give themselves and change the world and are dedicated to service and to making a difference and to purpose and it's just to so God, eerie you know? to think about because yeah I was about to talk talk about Jack and who he told himself that he was because everyone else told him he was a sick kid who was on death's door who couldn't mm-hmm. do anything who wasn't the smartest he was 165th and whatever he rejected that, but he decided who he was going to be. And he was going to be the next president of the freaking United States of America with. But it wasn't, he wasn't trying that on. That is really who he was. Who he was. Yeah. What's the difference there with choosing who you are and rejecting the cards that you've been dealt because and kind of like moving forward and who you want to be versus being a fraud and not living out what you were like put on this earth to do in a way. I don't know what the actual truth, the actual answer to that is, but I think with Jack and Kick, the reason that we can tell the difference is from the way that they were talking about themselves and about what they were doing. Like Kick knew that that wasn't all she wanted out of life. She, from her own mouth, was really torn back and forth all the time. She was just so unsettled. It was just, yeah, exactly. That's And Jack was so committed to it. Yeah. Jack knew this is who I am Mm -hmm. and never wavered. Kick was trying something on. But is it because she felt not sure and not confident already in being a Kennedy girl? Like that's... I think she felt... Very comfortable being a Kennedy girl. Yeah. I think she just wanted to see what else was out there. Yeah. Curiosity killed the cat. She did die because she got on a plane to go off on a scandalous weekend with someone who did not value her life and put it in jeopardy. Yeah. Chose that. Yeah. Oof. That is a hard freaking pill to swallow. That's that's the other thing that's so heartbreaking about it is that she wasn't sitting next to someone who... Knew her. Genuinely loved her, yeah. Genuinely loved her. Didn't even know her. Didn't know Kick. Didn't know the real Kick. Didn't care. And didn't care to know the real Kick either. (sighs) Like, if you are accidentally just shot out of the sky, spending time on things that you actually care about and and with someone who really knows you and loves you, that's just an entirely different thing just so, such a risky thing though saying that like I can control how deep this is rooted in my life like Jack with the yeah it is compromises how do you know you're going to be able to control <gasps> oh and that reminds me of what Jackie said which at the time I was like okay like that's just like spiteful and surface level now I'm like who am I talking to you know, what? like when Jackie like says something and you're like, are you a naive little girl or are you like, like, who am I talking to? Like that that is eight levels deep that I didn't even freaking realize. Like, what are you saying for real? A force of a tendency to do that. She said, I don't care how many women Jack sleeps with as long as I know that he knows that it's wrong. And now I want to cry. Because what she might have been saying was, as long as he doesn't lose himself in it. Yeah, as long as he's living in reality and we both know what's happening here and I don't then lose we're, him then to I have a, I'm still tethered to the, the person. To, to the person, to reality, to the JFK what that I, I married. know and what I signed up for. The second he loses that, then I'm not okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like she could have fully thought through that. First of all, she knew Jack. Second of all, she knew Kick and Kick's story. What if she would have even thought of what happened to Kick? What if 
It's like when you fully give yourself over to the lie or when you know what you're doing is not right, you know? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Are you living on the same planet as me or not? And I can never, ever reach you. There's a big difference. I'm like, can we have a conversation right now or... Are you talking you? a completely different language? And I have, there's no hope of even cutting through the, the fog and delusion. So it's like, maybe she was saying, I'll deal with whatever as long as I don't lose Jack. Mm-hmm. I'll deal with JFK as long as I don't lose Jack. Yeah. Or was she just being like, hmm, well, as long as he knows it's wrong, he's a freaking idiot, then fine. Now knowing, I mean, no, now knowing Jackie. Now knowing Jackie. I'm that's like, not what she was saying. That ain't what she was saying. She's not as like spiteful and just petty as I think. Or as I thought. I mean, she's she's petty. She Okay, she's spiteful. She's not petty. It's not surface level. No. Everything has been thought. Through. Through and over and, and again. Again. <laughs> and is solidified. And she's setting out the course that she is walking. It was all by design. It was all by design. She was indeed a master mind. And that's why she could stay. That's why she could hang. That's why she could. She had control still. And she kept her finger on the pulse of like what was going on. Mm -hmm. And that's why she she didn't have to live in. She lived in reality still. And so she was able to like, yeah, be okay with the reality that she was living in. Because it was more surface level stuff. She hadn't actually lost her full husband. And maybe that's why when he didn't come home from the cruise and was starting to like let his commit to let his gallivanting take over his personal life Mm -hmm. of his family and his child. And then she's like, you and his family couldn't even get through to him. You, my friend are crossing the Rubicon. And if you would like to do that, I shall exit. That is so true. My gosh. <gasps> he did. He got so close. He got close. Oh, Like Bobby couldn't God. even get him to come home. That, when she realized that Bobby- you, Bobby can't you reach you? When you see the face of, of the president's the little brother, brother, she saw Bobby and she was like, crap, he didn't even listen to you. He wouldn't even come home to you. So my friend- for you. We're going to have a conversation. Jackie, I'm becoming more of a fan. One thing too far, dude. Yeah. Wow. Honestly, though, like, that's love. Mm -hmm. That's having somebody's back. Yeah. Which makes sense to why they were so close when he was assassinated that their marriage was the best it had ever been because he was... Imp- more focused and more rooted in rooted, yep, uh-huh. in who he was actually. Yeah, I don't think he was less promiscuous, but he was no. more was more aware of what he was doing was wrong. <laughs> he was, and that it wasn't what he was married to. Yeah, yeah, the commitment and the loyalty, and which is exactly what Joe Senior identity was there. Joe Senior did that as well. He was not at Doesn't all. Doesn't make it right. It's just the awareness and of which, who you are and what you're doing and what reality is yeah and not losing yourself it's like when people end up fully given over to their vices their vices yeah Yeah. it's just like the test you cannot cut the cord once you cut the cord yeah well and it's the same thing too with it's you're able to you can come back it's just so hard your strengths can become your greatest weaknesses and your Mm -hmm. biggest vices as well and it's the whole idea of the sphere and it's just closer, like the good versus evil and the strengths and weaknesses, the sphere of it all. The line is just so much closer than I ever thought. It's like he, like Kick took one step too many and Jack just barely didn't. And the uh, yeah. fine line, it's not like and this the ocean of difference because you think, oh, how far can I go until it's over the edge? Mm-hmm. The line is so tedious and mm-hmm. so thin well, that's the thing, How too. The you closer you look, the the more you realize it is a constant, never-ending battle and a fight. And you are walking a tightrope. Like, you just are. It's like you you just have to stay engaged. And that's the bottom line. Kick kind of just, like, let go of the wheel. And yeah. you have to stay walking on the mm-hmm. tightrope. You cannot You got to have go. a strong core. Yeah. Like, physically. physically and, and metaphorically. Metaphorically. Got to have a strong core. 
Oh my gosh. And it's a crazy. clear, and you a can't clear let line. Go. A clear, um, you have to stay strong. You cannot let go. Like light at the end of the tunnel kind of a thing. Yeah. Like you have to know what you're walking to. Yeah. Keep your focus. Because if you look away. If you get distracted. You fall into the sea. And I, I okay, but okay. And maybe Let's you can read. look for two seconds. Not yes. Your eyes permanently. You you're have gone. to keep coming back yeah. to ground zero <laughs> and touching home your, base. Yeah. Home base. So the whole thing with Jackie, oh my gosh, the more I think about her, I'm like, oh, did she love Jack like in an actual real way, like in a, in a commitment, I've got your back kind of way? Yes, was I that told you that in KM11. But I mean, early on, because that, that was early on. Like it was a couple, a few years into marriage, but it wasn't. I think that she was always open to that. That's why it's such a tragedy that Jack didn't accept it fully. And I think that they were on a path too. Like I yes, literally do think they would have gotten the, there. Yep. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why her relationship with Lee struggled so much because she wasn't okay with people abandoning their core self and their core identity. And she felt that Lee in a desperation of having sick or in a desperation of finding significance, we kept saying like, oh, she wants her identity, her identity. I don't know if she was searching for identity or if she was searching for significance because she did gravitate towards like other famous people and wanting to be like a Broadway actor, star. A yeah. star. She was searching for spotlight and upset about Jackie having spotlight. I wonder if Lee's own betrayal of herself and her core values, because when Jackie went over to England to visit her and Michael Canfield and she figured out like two weeks in that Lee was having affairs, she was Shook. devastated that yeah. her sister could be that person. And she it was like she knew that that wasn't really Lee and was very upset by that. So it's like she kind of she warned Lee about that in their relationship. Lee did not heed warning, went ahead, abandoned her identity, and it made it really hard for Jackie and Lee to have a relationship because of that. And then she warned Jack about the same thing. Jack did heed warning, took a couple people telling him, but he did come back home and then didn't, didn't, keep doing that, you know, didn't yeah. walk further away. And then they were able to get closer. So Lee and Jackie got further because Lee kept betraying herself and walking away from her core and Jack came back home. Yeah. Maybe it's like we were talking about earlier. She, Jackie felt like I'm not getting through to the real Lee. Like yeah. you decided that, that for me. Yep. I don't get to have a relationship with the real Lee. And How so I have devastating. to put, yeah, I'm not even going to put the effort in to like mending this because what I'm mending is false. It's not even and you. or and or it's too painful and heartbreaking to have a relationship with this person because it isn't my sister. Mm -hmm. I know that you know that I know that you're not yeah. really you and being and playing this game. But then you like also won't admit it and the frustration and the pain in even just that would be so devastating. And doesn't it seem like Jackie it it right at all. Jackie used Onassis, but she never became a Jackie Onassis. She was still Jackie Bouvier, Jackie Kennedy. Yeah. She was just kind of using a resource. Yeah. Lee lost herself. It is just so interesting the more that you think about, the more that you know about a person and the more you like try to put yourself in the context of their entire life and who they are and their personality, their Enneagram, their relationship, whatever. And then you re-examine a decision that they made. And, and it then, gives it a completely different light. Yeah. Yeah. A different, completely like different not meaning. It's same. like Rosemary's lobotomy before and after you know who Joe and Rose Kennedy are. And Jackie not pursuing a relationship with her sister. And I did not make any accommodations for my sister before and after learning more about who Jackie is and who Lee was. It's just like, wow, that goes from spiteful to I've made peace with acceptance. Yeah. In the red strings. Insane. Everything is connected and you cannot look at a solitary thing. Really, truly. 
and take it at face value. Is in isolation? No. Nothing. And speaking of Jackie and her pettiness and her pettiness, something that came up for me because I'm still thinking because I immediately my personality, I just want to villainize her so badly. Like Mm -hmm. that is just my home base of, okay, Jackie's manipulative manipulative and and vain and says mean things about the Kennedy family, which I love the Kennedys and I'm going to defend them. I'm playing devil's advocate. But when I'm forcing myself to not do that. And to look at the situation, put myself in her shoe. I can't imagine competing with that. Competing with the Kennedys just because Cassie says in, I think Jackie's episode and also last episode, Mm -hmm. that Ethel was a skate goal, but Ethel was a Kennedy. She was on the same same wavelengths and just had something the, the Kennedy charisma and she was just life. one of them. She just was one of them. She could hang and they and the contradictions her. too. Yeah, exactly. Her the, being the way that she viewed life was the same. And how Jackie never stood a chance to even compete with that because Not of even her with childhood. Ethel, but just like with the Kennedy no, com- yeah, camaraderie. She didn't even have the skills to compete in the game that was the Kennedy family. You know what I mean? Like it was she, the upbringing. It was the upbringing. She was one of two. She grew up in a scarcity mindset. Mm. She did not have a solid She grew foundation. up as an outsider. And like the Kennedys were outsiders in society, but they were such a band of bandits uh-huh. together that they could never want for belonging or for camaraderie or for attention, connection, connection. Attention, yeah. And Jackie didn't have any, any of that. that. And the Kennedys had lived with such abundance perspective and Ethel lived with such, I mean, it was in different ways. The Kennedys were like, we're using this abundance to <laughs> feed the responsibility that we've yeah. got. And they were like, we're going to use this abundance to show off our abundance. Yeah. <laughs> but it was still the same perspective, the same lens. Right. Like they were on the same planet. Uh-huh. And Jackie was in a world of her own of abandonment and her. I never know what my dad's going to do. I never know where I'm going to be on the weekend, whose house I'm going to be in. I'm second to my step siblings. I'm like, I don't even belong in the house with my own mother. And I don't really even belong with my father either, but he's abandoned and he doesn't have anybody else. So I'll go visit him. Yeah, it's just like, like, she never had a home uh-uh. and never had She didn't have a home in- after- Losada when she was like seven years old. Yeah. She had she didn't have a home since then. So, anyways, I just am starting to understand how easy it would be, plus the fact that she's in her freaking 20s when they get married. Like mm-hmm. she's so young and so in over her head in a lot of ways. And the kind of similar to Pat coming up. She just was playing a different game than the one that she was yeah. actually playing. She realized she was in deeper than she had ever meant to be. And, and I think that Jackie thought she had a grip. I feel that I have the skills in to, place deal. to deal with someone like Jack. No, you don't. And then she realized <laughs> what was going Nobody on. Nobody does. Like, Nobody does. Wait, what? But I think that that's why Rose went out of her way to be like, Jackie, you can sit at the table. Jack, don't point out her differences. Don't make fun of her dress. She realized how bonded together with a profundity that merely blood seemed insufficient to describe that her children were. And she's like, dude, this girl don't stand a chance. She can't ever like there's no room. There's no seat at the table that she can squeeze into. There is no room. People got their elbows out as wide as possible. And there is not an inch for you to put your plate down. The dab. The dab. (laughs) So she never stood a chance. It was a great strength and it was also a great weakness of the Kennedys. Yep. They could take care of people like nobody's business, but they couldn't include hardly anyone. No, man. Would that be so sad and so isolating? Especially because Jackie didn't have a family of her own to, to run to or to lean back on, you know? Yeah. She didn't have... Janet came to her rescue sometimes. Lee came sometimes. But it was painful. Uh-huh. And there was so much yeah, complication and, and nuance and layers yeah. there. Complication. She did not have the... I mean, can you imagine? Literally, I mean, I can't imagine being anyone and just having to... Unless you're freaking Ethel and came from that. 
Yes. See? Or you just, the absolute, that is already who you are and you just fit right in like a fish in water. Yeah. Like we just all think we're awesome and we're going to do all the things. And we're never going to slow down. And we're never going to even never gonna... check to see if anyone's okay because yeah. we're okay. <laughs> because the king is on the castle and if he gets knocked off, he'll be fine. Yeah. Maybe he'll need to go to the ER. Like he's like, they broke my ankle. Everyone's like, so what? <laughs> and are you dead? And dot, 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 <laughs> question mark. What seems to be the problem here? This is a normal weekend for us. And she's like, I can't wait to get into more of the in laws. What is happening? I think Ethel is the exception to the rule. Only that one. the in laws are not allowed to sit at the table. And although she was included in obviously a lot of the family events, because mm-hmm. she was. No, okay. Mm. Oh. What? I was about to what, say, what, what? I was about to say, Ethel was included. I thought you were saying Ethel was included. Dude, Ethel was- did not care if she was included. If there was five seats in the car, she's going to be laying across the people in the back seat. She's coming. I don't, I am wild about Jack Kennedy and, I, and I'm just an in-law. And I'm just an in-law. But I love and him. nobody told me I should be here, but I'm here because I'm I want to be, be here. campaigning. I just had a baby a month ago and I am out on these, I am in these streets, baby. Yeah, she. So she never asked permission. So it's kind of a vicious Jackie cycle Jackie wanted though. to be invited in and Ethel never asked for that. Yeah, and I, but I think it's a vicious cycle because Ethel never needed them to like coddle her. She just jumped in and- so everyone accepted Took her, her. place. Yeah. And that's the and thing is like, there wasn't an inch at the table for no, someone to put their plate she down. She had to shove Ethel in. Ethel literally scooted people over. She didn't even she ask. Was like, she I want to be here. Just wiggled herself right in her <laughs> little body. Yeah. And started eating. But then because Jackie viewed herself as like needing an invitation, uh-huh. then they viewed her as Different. an outsider. Yeah. And she wasn't one of them. But it goes back to the freaking identity. Who do you, do you think that you belong yeah. here? Because if you think that you belong and you're telling me you belong, then I believe that you belong. Fine, yeah. If you're telling me that there's something to pa- like have pause about or have concerns about, then I believe you're different. And that is a freaking life lesson in of itself because Jack Kennedy did not belong. Jack Kennedy had no <gasps> business yep. being the president of the freaking United States, but he and didn't view Eunice himself as a cripple. No business being in Washington, D.C. She was a woman. And her hose were ripped. And her, and her skirt wasn't were- ironed. <laughs> and Jack was scrawny and... We cat called and said, who's going to freaking want you as the their freaking senator? Or their freaking you can't even digest normal food. Oh, yeah, you you're a freaking skeleton. Creamed chicken. Nobody's going to vote for you. And he was like, I'd vote for me. Listen to how amazing I am. Listen you're, to my speech. Never mind the riffraff, riffraff. and the rubble. Listen to this. <laughs> I'll freaking knock you This will blow your mind. Yeah, this is incredible. And I'm incredible. And so they all believed he was incredible. Join us here next week to hear all about Pat's loyalty to creating JFK, even when it meant living in a world of wiretaps, affairs, oh, and Frank Sinatra lighting your clothes on fire. Thank you all for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please give us a review on Apple, rate us on Spotify, and share blood and business with a friend or a sibling. If you'd like to support the show, the best way is to become a patron of blood and business. You will get bonus content every month, including a monthly bonus episode, interactive main episodes, and behind the scenes footage. To keep up with us day to day, you can follow us at blood and business on Instagram and TikTok. You can find the link for Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon in the show notes below. Thank you so much for the support, and we will see you back here next week for your regularly scheduled programming on Blood and Business. That reminded me you just said that. I um read this and I talked about it, but I don't know. I didn't I didn't put it in the script. But the reason that her and Peter stayed together for so long is what it seemed like partly because of there's a very specific part of the book that I was like wow because I thought that you were going to talk about that at the end of 